بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our study of the methodology of the salaf and the ummah's need for it by Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan حفظ الله تعالى he mentioned some statements that people that has become common today where people say with regards to people who are trying to practice the Salaf and other than people who try to practice the Minhaj of the Salaf that because all of us we fear extremism extremism Hulu is going beyond the bounds of the religion so for example meaning that Islam calls us to go on the straight path there's a straight path but Hulu is those people the extreme is those people who go outside that boundary they go this way a little bit they think, and, and they still are trying to go this way, but they're going out like this. That's Hulu. Tajawuz al had They've gone beyond the boundaries of Islam. In order, even if they've gone out beyond those boundaries, in order to get a Islamic, to reach an Islamic objective, it's still Muharram, deviant, bid'ah. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful of extremism in its various forms. But likewise, you have some people who are so easy with the deen and who want a no, new minhaj and a new methodology, a, a more modern, contemporary uh, conceptualization of Islam and how to practice Islam. And they say statements like, people should not remain close-minded and extreme. And may Allah protect us and forgive us in any way of referring to Ahlul Sunnah or the minhaj of the Salaf as extreme. So the Shaykh then says, these types of statements should not make a person forsake the way of the Salaf and the knowledge of the Salaf. The methodology of the Salaf is safer, more knowledgeable, and wiser than the methodology of the latter uh, generations. Very important to understand this. This is great Imams like Ibn Rajab, and he's going to mention that. There's a famous treatise called uh, by Ibn Rajab entitled. Uh, a madhab as salaf ahkam wa ahkam or something like this the minhaj al khalaf or fadl 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 al salaf ala khalaf or something like this which means the greatness of the salaf over those who came after them so even our ulama today which are far from the they adhere to the kitab illa they adhere to sunnah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam but they don't have the fadl of being there and taking their knowledge directly from those, from, uh, from you know, closer to the Prophet Sallallahu time. They have a fadl just from being in those three generations. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, Khair nas qarni, thumma ladhini yalunuhum, thumma ladhini yalunuhum. The Prophet Sallallahu said, the best of you is my generation. Then those who follow them, then those who follow them, letting us know they're the best. That doesn't mean that you won't have someone later who might have did more ibadah than a particular individual of that time that was even amongst the Salaf or that understood some aspects of fiqh maybe possibly better than a particular imam of that era. But still their fadl, their benefit is better. And they're, in general, they're wiser and they have more fiqh and understanding than the later generations. So we have to know and understand that. So then the Sheikh said, the way of the Salaf is pure and is taken from the Quran and the Sunnah. While the way of the latter generations is polluted, there is much pollution in their way and it is not pure. As for the way of the Salaf, then it is clean and uncontaminated. Because they had the Prophet Sallallahu they were closer to the time of revelation. They were there during the time of revelation. They were there in the midst of the Prophet ﷺ. They saw many things that are not reported that we, 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 we don't have. We have just what we have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved through men and the science of uh, the ilm, al-rijal, the knowledge of, of men and the chain of narrators and all the sciences of Islam. Allah preserved his deen this way. Walhamdulillah, walillah alhamd. However, the purity of what the Sahaba experienced and the Tabi'een experienced and the Itba'a Tabi'een experienced, we, we won't have that purity. We don't have it. 
We don't have it. No matter how many programs we have on the on the internet, which have many books and stuff. No, we don't have the, the purity. Then the Sheikh said, it is for this reason you find the books of the Salaf. The older they are, the purer and more comprehensive and easy they are. Accordingly, the great scholar Ibn Rajab, and this is what we were just talking about, uh, may Allah have mercy upon him, mentioned in his book titled, The Knowledge of the Salaf is More Superior Than the Knowledge of the Khalaf. He said, the speech of the Salaf is concise in wording, but their knowledge is abundant. While the speech of the Khalaf is vast in wording, but their knowledge is minute. And then Sheikh Salih bin Fozani ended his trees. He said, it is mandatory that we pay close attention to this matter. This is the way of the Salaf, which there is no means to our salvation except by way of it, and except by adherence to it, and patience upon it, after we learn and study it in the correct manner, not in a manner which is fabricated and forged, and ascribes matters to the path of the Salaf which are incorrect and untrue. We must be aware of this matter. So then Imam Fozan, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he ended his treatise and he said, they, these are concise words related to this topic and indeed I cannot encompass this topic in totality and from all angles. But Allah the Almighty and High stated, وَذِكْرَ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And remind, for verily the reminding profits the believers. And He also subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ نَفَعْتِ ذِكْرَ سَيَذَكْرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and therefore remind in the case the reminder profits them. The reminder will be received by him who fears Allah. Then the Imam ended with a supplication. He said, we ask Allah the Almighty and High to grant us success to perform righteous deeds and upright statements. And we ask him to make us firm upon the truth, adhere to it, and be patient upon the harm which afflicts us upon this path. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family uh, and his companions. Amin ya rabbil alamin. Thus ends our our brief study of this treatise. Some things I want to highlight as well with regards to this treatise is the importance of habitin fillah is gaining knowledge of the madhab of the salaf as Sheikh Salih bin Fozan mentioned and that the Quran and the Sunnah encourages us to do and orders us to do as well as uh, the menhaj of the Salaf. So we have to have ilm, we have to have knowledge. And knowledge is the way it's gonna raise you. And the reason I wanna mention that because there's so many people, as Imam Fozan mentioned throughout the treaties as well, and the Qa'id, the Fiqiyya, that the ulama say, al-ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat, that the proof of something, the reality of something in its substance, is in its substance, not in what it's called. So for example, here I'm in a place that looks like people are shooting a lot here, or they were. Here's some shotgun shells. If we were to refer to this, we say, hey, this is a plastic, a, a little water container. I can drink water out of it. Or it's a uh, dirt collector, whatever the case may be, okay? No, the reality of this, the substance of this, it hasn't changed. Regardless of the name of it, of what you've named it. And so likewise, if someone refers to them, his or herself, as Salafi, that's not sufficient to save them. And that's not sufficient to be on the path of Salaf, to say they're Salaf, Salafi. Oh, I follow the Salaf, I follow the method of the Salaf. This is a way, this is an inscription, which has its khair, which Shaykh al-Islam mentioned, la aib fi, that there's no harm in calling and one ascribing to the method of the Salaf. Well, it's rather, it's an, uh, an obligation to follow that madhab, though. That's the point, is to follow it. How are you going to follow the madhab of the Salaf if your whole understanding of Islam and your whole understanding of the madhab of the Salaf is from the internet? And meaning that you cut and paste from websites. But in fact, even for the lay person, they must gain sufficient knowledge. There are many websites that offer a lot of good. 
But however, I want to encourage the brothers and sisters, and I know it's tiring, but sit with those students of knowledge in your locality or watch them if they have uh, audio or video that you can benefit. And I'm not talking about just listening to fat Fatawa and stuff like this, but I'm talking about those things which ground you in your soul because the Fatawa will give you benefit, great benefit on many issues, but they are not the usul in general, they're not giving you the usul of what you need, or they may give you some of it, but you need to study in order to understand your religion, and that comes from being more comprehensive study, which is studying of the books. So my advice is read those books in Aqidah that are explained by the ulama, like if you want books in Aqidah that are basic, books like... Um, Asul al-Thalatha, Kuwait al-Arba, uh, books like this that have to do with Tawheed and that are explained and translated for you if you need the translation by the ulama, ulama like Ben Uthaymeen, ulama like Ben Baz, and, and others who have explained this and where you can find the explanation of their books. Likewise, there are so many other books that have been translated by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah, books on the Aqidah of, of the Salaf. I think um, Aqidah Sabuni might be translated, the Aqidah, the, the Minhaj of the Salaf, or something like this, which uh, Sheikh Rabib and Hadi al Madkhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala, that he explained. So his explanation, of course, is in Arabic, but there's also, I think, it's been translated into English. Usul al Sunnah, Imam Ahmed. This has also been translated. You can find that, and, and with many explanations, I think they've translated uh, Sheikh Abayr al-Jabri, Sheikh uh, uh, other mashayikh that have explanations. So there, it's there, and some of the stuff you can get free off the internet. So my advice is to read those books, and if you can, to listen to some of the lectures. I know there's many free lectures out there from the students of knowledge, many graduates from Medina, many brothers and sisters who came out of Yemen, many who come out of Egypt, who've come out of Mauritania, wherever, wherever they've studied to, to study Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Madhab of the Salaf and they're teaching the Madhab of the Salaf then benefit, benefit from those benefit from those those full books like this, we just, that's why I like to study these treaties <coughs> then you can say you finished it if you went through the whole thing, you went through the methodology of the Salaf Asadi and the woman's need for it you didn't just read it, you could have read this just as much as I, but I tried to give some little benefits from my studies and things to emphasize what the Imam uh, has said, has stated. So we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything that I said was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.